This is a new voice for a new Scotland. This is part two of the Roundtable 1320 Digital Rally. This week, David Younger talks about universal basic income. I'm joined now by David Younger, a fellow Assembly member and volunteer of the Digital Covenant Core team, the same as myself. Um, David has carried out a lot of research on the pros and cons of introducing universal basic income. Um, with regular mention of this in recent months from MSPs and MPs, um, he's here to tell us a little bit more about it. Hi, David. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, good. Shall we, shall yeah, we plow so- on? Yeah, so David, can you tell us uh, what your research has shown as being the most important things to consider when countries look to implement a system of universal basic income and why? Um, well, when you ask me that question, the most important thing to, to, to bear in mind, but the, to take into consideration, is uh, the constitutional side of it, rather than the practicality. The, the practicality is such that if we uh, adopt universal basic income, we have to decide amongst ourselves what the best form of UBI actually is. And there are, well, there are several, but there are two major elements that we can consider here. One is um, from the, the Finnish model, uh, which I think a lot of people already know about if they don't know the, the exact uh, basics of it they do they have heard of it let's say but the other is a model that was uh, instituted in in Canada in Ontario uh, in 2017 um, which is also extremely interesting uh, so first of all if I can just quickly go through the basics the Finnish model uh, involved 2,000 respondents um, the idea, uh, it was operated by a group called Kela, who is actually the, the Finnish um, Social Security Agency. Their original project involved 10,000 people. Uh, it was cut short by a government decision. Um, the 2,000 that they did work with were all unemployed. By contrast, the Canadian model involved 4,000 people and they were simply in the lowest income category, regardless of whether they were employed or not. The Finnish model, the the idea, it was very much um, uh, in the end politics driven. They wanted to see, the government that is, wanted to see that there was an improvement in employment prospects And the result was a little disappointing, I think, for them. There was an improvement, but it was less than one hour per month per respondent. In the Canadian model, they were simply looking for an improvement in um, well-being, in more ability of the group to improve their employment prospects, to improve their general well-being. Also, the main difference here was that the Finnish model involved a payment of around 600 euros, which is about 500 pounds at that time. The Canadian model was rather more generous. It uh, was between 13 and 18 thousand dollars per year. Uh, The the Finnish model, the the figures I've given, by the way, are monthly rather than annually. And uh, the Canadian model had some interesting results Both of these schemes uh, were effectively ended by party political uh, aspirations or party political decisions, shall we say, on the part of both governments. Um, So the one one thing I would say here is before we even talk about what form of UBI, we have to decide that that form is constitutionally guaranteed. Uh, which brings me to the Assembly here, because the Assembly can decide how uh, a UBI scheme goes forward and how it is protected from party political interference so that we don't go from, say, one left-wing administration that's all in favour of it to one right-wing administration that just wants to cancel it, which is exactly what happened in Ontario. And in that in that case, then David, did that result in sort of a reversal of the positive effects that it had when the, it was cancelled, or do they not have that sort of data yet? I don't have access to that data because in 
in both cases, Helsinki University and um, Toronto University simply wanted to find out what the effects of the UBI scheme were going forward as a, as a scheme. As soon as it stopped, they were they were less interested in the in in the, the negative results, shall we say, of um, withdrawing the scheme. They were interested in finding out how it affected people's well-being, um, and the, the the principal effect was 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 not economic, but it was um, social, uh, health, mental health, and um, the ability of of people to control their own lives. That was a that was a huge response, particularly in Finland, where people felt that their lives were back under control. They they were in control of their lives as opposed to outside influences. Okay, so um, obviously you you are a member of the assembly and you have signed the covenant. So is this something that you see? Um, being taken forward in that way because from what you've described it sounds like it could be a great solution for Scotland and um, especially in this period of economic uncertainty we're going to have and recovery post-Covid um, but how would you see Scotland implementing such a system like UBI um, and would it be implemented should it be I suppose implemented in line with a whole host of solutions through that assembly because by the sounds of things there would need to be quite a lot of public consultation on how such a system would work. Yes there would, um, there, there, there are several separate issues in, in that uh, particular question you asked, one of which um, is that the ability of the system to create universal basic income has to be on the basis that the name universal has to come forward. The big problem that I have had with all of the schemes that I've looked at, um, except one, but that is a, a different issue. Um, but the basic problem with all of these schemes is that they are, um, in inverted commas, trials. Now, if you have a trial system where you say, well, let's take a couple of thousand people out of this community and we give them money and see how they get on. That's not universal basic income. That's selective basic income. And the, the, the big problem with that is that um, politically, uh, there's a terrific tendency then to, to start going on means testing. So uh, effectively, the people who get UBI, they get it because they are most in need. Uh, and the result is uh, you will get resentment from the rest of the community. You will get people saying, why should they get it? They're work shy. They can't, they can't make a living for themselves. They should, you know, do whatever it is that, you know, they have to do to make a living yeah. for themselves. In um, a way that I suppose the benefit system currently can be stigmatised in that way. It, it is indeed. It, ne it never used to be, but it is now. And it's, uh, it's, it's a very yeah. serious issue. Um, and I, I don't think, I mean, if you're going to have universal basic income, it has to be universal. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't call it UBI, you call it something else. In the Canadian model in particular, all oh right, they only took 4,000 respondents. That was a, a trial system. First of all, I would say that if we are going to do it in Scotland, there is enough empirical evidence not to worry about trialing because effectively the information is there. You're not going to get any more information by trialing a new system. What we have to there is there is one way of doing it without rolling it out across the entire nation, and that is just to take a, a separate community, one which is largely self-contained or as much as possible, and give everyone in that community UBI and see what happens. That that's the only way that I can think of that we could actually determine what the true results are across um, the community because in the end it's the community that, that, that benefits from it not the individual. I think everybody misses that point they, they think in terms of oh um, you know Mr B uh, needs more money so we give him more money but that that's not what it's all about it's really it's really about what happens when you put a certain amount of money into the community 
um, and you can do it through individuals or you can do it in a block uh, grant as they, as they did in Kenya. But the Kenyan model was very much affected by social and geographical conditions in Kenya. And even the people who ran that project admitted that it wouldn't work in large urban areas. It was only for small rural areas. In my, in my view, um, I would like to see UBI uh, rolled out. But I think that uh, any Scottish government that rolls it out is going to have to accept that there is a huge nationwide cost and they're going to have to determine how that cost is met. The positive aspects on the Canadian model, the, the most, one of the most interesting was uh, the, the response of two um, of, of the recipients of, of UBI who both at that, ha at that time had purely coincidentally happened to start their own businesses. And being in receipt of UBI, they made it absolutely clear that that money actually helped them through the startup phase and helped their businesses to grow and become self-sufficient. They both said that they would never have survived the first year of business whilst trying to keep a roof over their heads and look after their family. So there is definitely the, the prospect of an economic benefit from UBI. But we can't be uh, we can't be prescriptive. We can't say, "Oh, you're starting a business, so you can have some money." It doesn't work like that. Yeah. I mean, you can, you could come up with a system that says that, well, you know, somebody starting their own business can have um, a government grant, but that's not UBI. It's just something completely different. But in terms of UBI itself, I I, I need to go on to say at this point that I personally regard UBI as a stepping stone. It's not the ultimate answer, it's the, one of the, 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 the steps that we have to take on the way forward to designing a new kind of economy for the whole world, not just Scotland, but um, everybody has to take this on board. We are looking at um, the end of what we like to call the neoliberal, please don't argue with me, because there is no <laughs> definition of neoliberal, but what what we all recognise under the term neo, neoliberal, a capitalist type economy, it brings into play um, an, another issue, which is something that I have found, and I've found it very difficult to write a brief article about this, because UBI is inexorably bound up with jobs, with work, with how how we define work how we value it, because recipients of UBI um, would have the ability to de design their own workplace. They would have the ability to determine what they wanted to do with their time. And at the moment, what we have is a system which says, you have to work, therefore, um, here's a job, or there's a job over there, or go and find a job, and whatever it is, um, you work at it because you need the money. Yeah. And, and, and we have something like in, in the USA, something like 60% of people actively hate their jobs. And I'm pretty certain it's, it's fairly close to that in the UK. Yeah, people do jobs because they want money, because they have to have money to live. And what we're looking at here is designing a system where people can choose what they do and ultimately it's not going to be any less economically productive i mean we have to get over this idea of productivity because in reality most occupations that we we follow whether whether they're paid or not are productive to the local economy but they're not productive in the international economic sense the only productive jobs there are jobs in manufacturing where the manufacturer exports the end product. It's the only way that they can determine how much a job is worth. Uh, so if you work in a factory and you, you happen to produce 200,000 pounds worth of product in a year, then after your wages and costs are taken off it, that is your productivity. But if you're looking after a, um, a loved one, who, who needs 24-hour care, your productivity is zero. 
you know, you don't even have a job. You've given up a job to do this job. Yes. Maybe However, you're, do... you're, you know, one of the most valuable it. people, aren't you? So. Yeah. We don't, we don't recognize it. And what about uh, one partner in a two partner marriage who decides um, it's actually better for the partnership and for the children and for all sorts of other reasons to stay at home and be there when the kids come home from school and cook meals for them and spend time with them. The benefits of that could be absolutely massive, but yes. that person has become unemployed and therefore is a burden on the state. It doesn't work and we have to find a new way of allowing people to assess how they spend their time. And one way of doing it is UBI because in that event, um, we don't um, we, we, we don't judge them. We don't we don't say, oh, well, you're in a low income occupation yes. or you're you're not in an occupation at all. Um, we don't judge them. We're, we're giving them the money and in receipt of that money, they can do as they think it is best for their personal input input and the society that they live in. Yeah, if you want to be a writer and you want to write a book, then why not? It might be that only about 10 people in the world want to read your book and nine of them think it's rubbish anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't yes. matter because it's given, it's given you value and it's added to the sum total of, of, of human society. You want to be a musician. Um, there are probably thousands of musicians out there who never got a recording contract and probably quite a few of them are actually very talented. Um, yes. so, so why shouldn't you be a musician? Why shouldn't you, you try to peddle your music? You can do it online, it's easy enough. But whether you make any money out of it, that's, that's another issue. It's a point. Why not? Yes. You know, there's, there's, there's masses of things that you could be doing. There's, there's favours that you could be doing your neighbours. You, there's, there's things that you could be doing um, to help the local community, but you don't have time for it because you're working nine to five, six days a week, plus overtime, just to, to keep a roof over your head. Um, what's wrong with having the time to 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 help out elderly neighbors what's the time what's the problem with having time to to add to your local community and this yeah. brings me back to what i was saying earlier about ubi it has to be assessed on a community basis and in all of the projects that i've looked at that has never been done um, every time such a project has been brought into to effect it's been for a selected group and it was always the unemployed or the low income but what about everyone you know why don't why don't we just look at how much money can come through ubi and and effectively help the people within a community all of the people within a community to design and operate um, activities within that community which actually help everyone and I, and I think that, I think it would work. Sorry, on that basis, it kind of feeds into the wider social and economic benefits of having such a system. It's not just about, you know, where the money comes from for people, but it's about what it allows people to do to build and integrate within their communities. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a much larger argument here about what money is. Um, and I don't want of to- Of course, yes. For the sake of this interview. Um, but effectively, what we're doing is placing money in, in the part of the community where it will be spent. And at the moment, the system is placing money in the part of the community where it is not being spent. It's being converted into assets. Yes. Um, now, um, I, I'll go on. at this point, I would say that um, there was a big difference between the, 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 the Finnish and the Ontario model in terms of income. That is a dividing line. The Finnish model was fairly modest in what people got. Now, I'm not saying that that was wrong. I'm just saying that if, if we were to go down that route in Scotland in designing a, a, a low income UBI, we have to be sure that certain um, aspects of society generally are, are protected. 
uh, in particular, if you have a low income, um, then it has to be in addition to any existing benefits that are uh, you're, you're entitled to. Um, okay. If we, if we just say it's an alternative to the universal benefit system, nobody benefits from that except a few administrators, a few politicians. Um, it doesn't yeah. work. So it has, if, it, if it's a low income, it has to be in addition to what's already existing in terms of benefits. If it's a higher income, um, for example, uh, uh, the alternative would be to say half of the median income. So at the moment that, that works out at around 13 and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, okay. Then it can, it can displace certain benefits. So housing benefit, for example, unemployment benefit, um, it won't displace others, uh, for example, the uh, niche benefits, uh, if you're looking after a disabled uh, relative or you, you know, yes. those, those sort of issues, they will still be in addition, there will be additional payments. But basically, um, you're, uh, you're getting that income as a, as a partial replacement of the benefits that you would be getting. Um, and it, it's quite important to make that that distinction quite clear because the money has to come from somewhere and I'll go into that in a minute. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but ultimately, uh, we have to have protection and, and I go back to the, um, the People's Assembly here we have to determine what those protections are. For example, if we have minimum wage, then that minimum wage has to be policed and it has to be maintained. Yes. Because the one, the one thing that can't be allowed to happen is that employers um, ca cash in on, on UBI and start paying people two pounds an hour. Um, that will not happen that w w w it should be prevented from be from happening under any circumstances so the minimum yes. wage has to be um protected and maintained um and uh, 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 certain certain other issues such as uh, local taxation and whatnot um okay but it's really for the people's assembly um to determine and I'm, I'm very much in favour of the People's Assembly doing it rather than it being handed down from uh, the administration, either in, in the UK or in Scotland for that matter. It doesn't make any difference. Um, I don't want it handed down top down because then it is under political control. And yes. from what I've seen of all of the, um, the, the attempts made so far to introduce UBI, including the latest one in Spain, by the way, they're under political control and politicians can take away what they give. Yes. It, it's, a, it's a very unstable system. How, how can you say, I'm on UBI and I feel secure if next year some right-wing politician is going to be elected instead of the one who gave you the UBI in the first place? Um, and then he's just going to say oh that's a hell of a lot of money we're just going to take it away so you're not going to get your ubi after next month or whatever um and that's yes, what's been, yes. that's, that's what's been happening um so we in in reality i i i really despair of the idea of um having yet another experimental system yet another yes. um you know test of, of, of UBI. We've been down that road. We, yeah. know, we, know, we know from the limited amount of information that you can get out of the limited um, um, projects that have been put forward in the UBI, we know what the results are. The results yeah. are better mental, mental health, better physical health, um, the more, more uh, feeling amongst the recipients that they have control over their own lives. But we don't know what the, the, the effect on the community is. We don't know what the long-term effects are because even the finished model only lasted two years before somebody pulled the plug. Okay. Um, and this, this, is, this is something that has to go for five or ten years even before we can really determine how the, the ultimate results are going to be, how good they're going to be, how 
ordinary people are going to be able to to um, uh, really benefit from it and how society and communities in general are going to benefit from it yes. um, and it may require tweaking but it I don't I personally don't think um, we'll get a negative result out of it I just think we'll we'll get some unexpected results well, particularly, I think if we are looking and as we're discussing here and we see this as something that should be driven by the people. So rather than being top down, um, the policy is driven from the bottom up through the communities. They drive that policy and they tell or instruct the government how they think it should work so that it's designed in a way that benefits them the most. Often when policy is designed by government, there's not enough consultation or enough understanding of people's circumstances on the ground in the first place for these policies to be effective. Um, I know from my own work experience, I, I work around advice centres and food banks and things, and I have watched the rollout of universal credit. And I work with advisors who, you know, recognise right from the get go that system was fundamentally flawed and it was flawed because it was developed by the civil service and politicians and it wasn't developed by the people. And I think that's the, the biggest thing for, for Scotland going forward is that if we want to be this independent country and we do want to rebuild, then we need to do that together as a people and not as a narrative that's been led by the politicians telling us what we want. We need to tell them what we want instead. Mm. So we need to flip that system ever so slightly, maybe. And, and, and there's, there's much, much wider issues which we can't really discuss here tonight because they're, um, I don't know how long you want to make this video, but uh, I don't think three yeah. hours is a good idea. Um, no. <laughs> but there are, there are much wider issues on, on uh, as I said earlier, on how we judge the economy, what the economy actually yes. is. Um, because we have politicians who go for economic growth it's always growth, um, but they don't understand what that growth is and they don't understand how to achieve it. Now, when they talk about economic growth, nearly all the economic growth that the UK has had over the last 20 years has been in economic activity. Yes. It's a different thing entirely from economic productivity. And I'll bet you if you got any politician, any, any government member on television and asked them, a direct question about productivity, they would get pretty upset. Um, they, they would actually want to walk away from it because they know perfectly well that productivity doesn't actually mean a great deal. Um, yes. you know, what you do in a community and what I do in a community, actually in economic terms, really only has a benefit on us. Yes. It, in fact, it doesn't even have an economic benefit. I might, I might, come and paint your house for you because you don't know how to do it and I do I yeah. might I might fix a, a, a leaking um, a leaking uh, pipe in your sink uh, um, you know I might I might come and fix your electrics because I know how to do it and you don't you might come and help me um, sort out things that I don't know about yes. now um, well that goes back in fact to to uh, David Graeber's um, description of of the um, uh, debt by obligation. <laughs> so effectively, uh -huh. effect effectively, you feel obliged as a member of the community to help other members of the community. So I may do you a favour. You don't necessarily do me a favour in return, but you might do a favour for the person around the corner or up the road. It doesn't matter. The fact is that because I've done you a favour, you feel obliged to return that favour in any way possible. So if it happens to, to, to be helping an old person get their shopping in or, or sort their garden out, you'll do that for them. And, and so on and so forth, because it, it carries on. As yes, you do favours for other people, they do favours for other people. And governments hate this because you can't tax those things. You, know? <laughs> you, can't, you can't say, Oh well, that was worth twenty thousand a year, so we're going to charge you five thousand pounds tax or whatever. They can't do it because no, no money passed hands. Um, yes. Sometimes, yes. sometimes, sometimes money does pass hands, but we'll we'll gloss over that one. Um, but the reality of it is that a lot of our economic activity 
can't be judged by uh, conventional means of productivity. It has to be judged by what we do for each other, how our lives are improved as a result of that being done. And if you're in receipt of UBI, and this is one of the reasons why I say UBI is a stepping stone rather than the ultimate um, result. Um, but if you're in receipt of UBI, then you, you have you have the security of an income yeah which allows you to do the other things that the the current economic system insists that you do like paying your electricity bill and paying your rent or mortgage or what it you know so you you can do those things but at the same time you don't have to do the other things that involve getting the money in in the first place which means that you can start doing things that actually benefit the community that benefit uh, your neighbours, your friends, your family. Um, so it it becomes a more a more fluid system and one that is less identifiable to central yes. government. So the People's Assembly, in in this sense, really has to make that kind of decision because no government will. They won't understand yes. it. They won't relate to it. They'll 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 actually they'll actually find it threatening. Because, because it reduces their income, it reduces their control over how you um, conduct your life. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so, so many things are, are just out of their control. They, I, I, I suspect they probably hate the idea. They want to give you universal basic income, perhaps, but they want to do it on their terms. Yes. Yes. Their, their terms are not necessarily the terms that we have to be looking at. Yes. Um, but when we get on to the, 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 the point, uh, one way or another, it has to be paid for. Um, of course, absolutely. <laughs> and um, there, are, there are taxation issues. And, and again, one of, one, of the, one of the big lies that has been told to us over the years by conservatives, mostly conservatives, although in the last 20 years, the Labour Party have got into this as well, is the idea of if taxes have to go up, yes. it's your taxes. It's not, it's not companies' taxes, it's not, it's not duties, it's not anything that doesn't directly affect you when they talk about tax, it's your tax. Yes. So, Obviously, people will vote for lower taxes because they don't want to pay so much. But they don't realise that the lower taxes they generally get are the lower taxes on big business, the lower taxes on um, uh, uh, wealthy individuals, on inheritance, yeah. tax, uh, land value tax, any of these things. They're they're not they're not even in in the um, in the frame for discussion. Yeah. Uh, and the, the problem is that income tax uh, at the moment um, is responsible for about 29% of all taxation. Yes. And, uh, okay, you stick a penny on income tax, you make another 50 or 60 billion, but it, it doesn't even begin to, to cover what we need to do in no. the way of universal income. So... Uh, I'm a great believer in, in land value tax. I'm a great believer in uh, wealth taxation. Um, and that, that's a whole different issue, one that has to be designed very, very carefully indeed. We can do it. Um, you know, companies, I could, I could show you graphs which show that, that, that companies have consistently, since 1973, they've shed uh, their workforce and increased their profits. Yes, um, yes. And, and, and that, and that basically is because they're making use of better technology. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, except that no administration in the world seems to have been prepared for it. So effectively, instead of saying, well, hang on a minute, <laughs> you can go on making these profits, but we're going to take a bigger slice of those profits because it still leaves you with more than you started off with. Yes. And we can use that slice to pour back into to the general economy and help yes. our own people. If governments had 
thought about this and really planned it out a long, long time ago, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion because yes, of course. Right, from the, right from the outset, money would be poured back in at the bottom of, of the economic scale into the pockets of the very people who need that money, who will spend that money and actually help the corporations who are paying the tax in the first place. Yes. Uh, I think things have reached the situation now where the consumer society can't continue. Um, yeah, I would agree with that, David. I see that as well. Yeah. We're losing a huge percentage of populations across the world who simply aren't earning enough money to um, have a good disposable income, which means they can't buy the products that the big corporations yes. are manufacturing. And as it goes on, uh, we're reaching the stage also, we, well, in fact, we reached the stage back in about 2010 where people can't afford to buy homes. Yeah. And the, 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 the percentage fell from 69, I think it's now around 54%. Um, and, and with the upcoming generation of potential homeowners, it's going to fall still further. So we might get back to where we were 100 years ago, where 20% of the population were owner occupiers. Um, yeah. And there, there we have another problem because the whole, the whole rental market is, uh, is, is privately owned. Um, governments have made sure of that. So we, we do have to reset the system. Yes. And the more I think about it, the more I go into this, the more I realise it has to come through the voice of the people rather than the voice of governments. Because governments are always, um, I, don't, I don't want to be overly critical of Nicola Sturgeon because you'll get all sorts of nasty comments. But um, I would say they were, they were given an open door for, for uh, land value tax and they ran a mile. They turned yes. around and, and they, they, they just ran away from it. Yes. Um, and, and perhaps even, even more um, worrying, the, 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 they were given um, legislation for rent controls, for proper rent controls. They ran away from that as well. Yes, and I, yes. I don't like where this is going. I want, it's, it's got nothing to do with whether I want an independent Scotland or not. But if we get an independent Scotland and we've got a government that is just as bad as the one in England, we haven't really gotten that far forward. And really, the People's Assembly is the structure that will make that happen. They will decide how yes. we want our new country to be. They'll decide how we, they'll decide everything, you know, environmental issues, yeah. um, economic issues. They'll, they'll, they'll make huge decisions, which we can then hold our government to account on. Yeah. Whoever happens to be in government in an independent Scotland. Um, but I, I do believe, particularly with UBI, that we have to take the, um, the, the political element out of it. Yes. You can't allow uh, a government to bring in UBI and then decide 18 months down the line, oh, it's too expensive, it's too troublesome, yeah. we're not going to have yeah. it. Um, yeah. If we're going to do UBI, we do it. And that's it. Yes. If we're not going to do, if we're not going to do UBI, then be honest and say so. Yeah. Yes. We're not going to do UBI because yeah. we want the big corporations to continue making their profits. Um, there are so many lies told about um, general economic conditions. You know, the idea that if you reduce um, corporation tax, people will will pour money into the, the country, and if you increase um, corporation tax, they won't. Yes. Um, I mean, that, that is, quite frankly, that is bollocks. Yes, there's <laughs> no evidence of, to suggest that's the case as well. I've looked at well, that many a time. Actually, there's evidence to suggest exactly the opposite. The opposite, because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and there are ways of extracting corporation tax. There are, there are methods that we can bring into place that will yes. allow us to, to apply corporation tax to international um, corporations. Yes. Um, there are methods which will allow us to stop wealthy people hiding their wealth in tax havens. 
Yes. We've, we've got all those levers. Yes. But for some reason over the years, all our politicians have become terribly frightened to even think about using them, let alone making them work. So the money is there for UBI if we want to do UBI. Yes, um, it, and, it just needs why, prioritized. Yeah, and why should we want to do it? Because it's the most effective way of putting the money from where it is just now into the place where it needs to be and creating a more equal society. And every research carried out in any part of the world shows that the best societies are the more equal ones and we Perfect. have to we have yeah. to move to equality um yeah. but I, I did say earlier that um i've said twice in fact and now i'm saying for the third time that ubi i still regard as only a stepping stone yes there is there is a place we can go beyond that um I don't want to discuss it here because it is so complicated and besides yes. anything, besides, besides that, I haven't even worked out in my own mind exactly how it works, but I have got an idea that we provide people with the basics of life. So you yeah, know, you, could, you, could, you could be on a salary of a hundred thousand a year, but, but I would say to you that this country owes you um, the equivalent of say 20,000 in terms of keeping a roof over your head. If you want to add to that, fine, no problem yeah. at all, but you can't yeah. go below that. So if you're, if you lose your job, your 100,000 disappears and the next day you wake up and you find you're, you're down to your last few bob, you've still got a roof over your head. Yeah. You're not going to lose that. Yes. Um, it might not be the one that you, <laughs> That you paid for when you were uh, on your hundred thousand, but at least it's not out on the street. Yes. Um, and 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 other issues like like power, heat and light, um, basic your basic food needs. Yeah. Um, all of all of these should be covered um, out with the the general economic sy system. And and then you can work. You can do whatever job you like, and you can, you you can be a, an entrepreneur. You can you can be the greatest capitalist in the world. It doesn't yes. that doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that you have the protection of what happens if everything goes wrong. And how much more confident would you be to go and take a punt on an idea if you thought if it goes tits up on me? <laughs> I still, I, I still got a roof over my head. I, I can still, yeah. I can still heat the house. I can still switch the lights on, and I can yeah. still cook food for my kids. Yeah. Um, you're much, you're much more likely to, to, to want to take a chance. And if one yes. chance in a hundred works out, then the country benefits. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, it leads to a more fulfilled and happy society at the end of the day, doesn't it? Of course um, it does, because you've yeah. got the control over what you do with your life. You exactly, can decide which is, how, yeah. how your life goes. Sorry, on that note, David, I was going to say, I think we're just running out of time. Um, but oh, certainly yeah. from here, I can see material for shows in the future. So um, you never know, it might become a bit more of a regular thing that we catch up and chat about these things. Um, well, but certainly but, the information you've given today, I would hope would encourage people to look at UBI in a bit more detail certainly to realize it needs more consideration and potentially to you know sign up to the covenant and join that conversation in the assembly sign up to the covenant and i would also say please be please, oh sorry please feel free to contact me ask me questions i can give you information i can give you basic background may help those who are really interested in following this through I can give you basic information which may well help you make better decisions, better decisions than I'm coming up with. I mean, I'm just coming up yeah. with ideas. If somebody out there get, get, gets hold of the information and analyzes it and takes it on board, they could well come up with something that I'd never even thought of. Yes. Um, and that, that's what it's all about as well. Um, the People's Assembly, is is everybody and there yes. are people there are people out there who probably don't even know that they've 
they, they, they're smart enough, they're, they're bright enough, and they've got ideas enough, creative yes. enough to come up with new solutions. So, yeah, don't, don't listen to me and think that I am telling you that I know better than politicians. I probably do, but then <laughs> you, pro you, you probably know better than me. Um, the, the, you know, this, 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 isn't a, this isn't a competition. It, yeah. it's, about, it's, it's about thinking this through. I've given you my ideas tonight. And um, yes, I'd love to talk, I, particularly about jobs. I'd love to talk about jobs. We do that in another interview. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Great to, great to chat to you. See you later. Not at all. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Join us next week for part three of the Roundtable 1320 Digital Rally. This is a new voice for a new Scotland. And in life, don't, 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 don't,